How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs and today I want to quickly show you how to install vertical blinds on a sliding glass door. Now the install is pretty easy and straightforward. I'll walk you through that complete process and you'll be totally comfortable going in and handling that project yourself. But I'm going to start off with talking about the two different mounting options that you have, whether that is an inside mount or an outside mount, because that is going to impact the dimensions that you're going to get to accurately fit your application and cover your sliding glass door. So let's jump in and talk about those two different mounting options that you have. So the first option for mounting and the option I prefer is an inside mount. All that means is the header and the vertical blind louvers themselves are going to be all contained within the door opening. Now, the challenge for this is you need to have the correct spacing. What you need to do is measure from the sliding glass door frame itself and the horizontal surface that you have, and you're really going to want about three inches. Now, each brand or manufacturer is going to be a little different. Maybe it's two and seven eighths, or, or maybe it's a little bit more, depending on really the size of the louvers. But again, probably about three inches. <clears throat> is what you're gonna need for clearance to make sure you can inside mount that. I don't have anywhere close to that. I have less than one inch, so I'm going for option two, which is gonna be an outside mount. Now, selecting the correct mounting option for you is critical because that is gonna determine how you measure to get the correct vertical blinds. Let's talk about inside mount. So with inside mount, what you're gonna do is measure your spacing from door jam to door jam, So mine would be 106 inches. So in this case, if I was doing an inside mount, the overall width is 106. I'm gonna take a quarter inch off each side and I would get a 105 and a half inch wide head rail. Now that would be a completely custom size. It would not be a common size you're gonna find in most home improvement shops, but that's what I would get in general. And then for the height, really what you're looking for here I have about 78 inches in height. Again, I would like to have about a half inch clearance at the bottom so the louvers are not dragging on the carpet when I open those up or when I change the angle to let in more or less light. So for this door application, if I did inside mount, I would do 105 and a half inches wide and then the height I'd be looking at is 77 and a half inches. Now that is not what I'm going for uh, because I need to do an outside mount. Now when you do an outside mount, what you want is more overlap on the side, and then of course it's gonna be higher, right? Because you're gonna mount it above. So in this case, I'm gonna go with an overall height of 84 inches. And the nice thing is I have more room to play here. Because I'm gonna be able to move the brackets vertically up and down, I'll be able to adjust that gap at the bottom to make sure those louvers aren't dragging on the carpet. So 84 inches is what I'm going with for this outside mount. Now, in terms of the overall width, again, this is a, a different application than what you're dealing with. I would be looking at about 106 inches, like I said earlier, but I want an overlap. I need at least a, usually an inch overlap, maybe two inches. And why you do that is because then that's gonna help give you more privacy and also block out the light. In my specific case, 110 inch vertical blind I can get, but it's a custom order and it is much more expensive. So for this application, from a time perspective on this project and also a cost perspective, I'm actually going to trim it up quite a bit and only go with a 104 inch wide blind. Why am I doing that? Because a 104 inch wide blind is actually a fairly readily available. Usually you can find it in stock at your home improvement stores. So that's what I'm going with. It's actually not going to overlap and it's just going to barely cover the actual exposed glass when I take into account the framing around the sliding glass door in this additional window pane. So again, you usually want to have at least an inch on the outsides for your overall width. So take that into account for your outside mounts. And now that you know how to size it, and if, if that doesn't make sense, jump down in the comments. I'm always down there and willing to help you guys out. So just let me know what question or what issue you're having, and I'd be happy to uh, help you out as much as I can. But now I'm going to jump in and show you how to install the vertical lines. 
Starting out the mounting process, really I'm just gonna position the first mounting bracket. Now this is a very common design of mounting bracket. It has a surface where if it's an inside mount, you could screw this to the top, or if it's an outside mount, this is the surface that we're gonna uh, screw to and secure that to the wall. The nice thing, when we usually secure to drywall, you're trying to find a stud, right? We're trying to find a vertical stud and secure something to that with a nice wood screw. In this case, when you have an opening such as this, that mine specifically spans about nine foot, yours might be more like six foot, you have what's called a header. So you actually have a vertical piece of lumber here that takes the load and transfers the load from the space down to some king studs on the outside. So we have really multiple inches, maybe eight inches from the bottom surface to top where a two by eight is vertically aligned. And now we have wood surface all the way up and all the way across this to mount to. So you really not have, you shouldn't have to find studs. You should be able to position that wherever you want to on this outside mounting surface. So the first one here, you're gonna to wanna to know where the end of your head rail is. Remember, mine's a little bit in, but yours might be overlapping. So wherever that head of your, the end of your head rail is gonna be, and then mark about four inches in, and just make a small mark. Now in the vertical direction, I have an 84, I have an 84 inches Now in the vertical direction, I have 84 inches. Now in the vertical direction, my blinds are gonna be 84 inches. But I want a half inch at the bottom and I know I'm gonna position the top of the bracket, which is another quarter inch down where the head rail, where the 84 inches would start. So really I'm gonna mount this at 84 and three quarters of an inch. All right, before I mount this first bracket, I do want to talk about one thing that's probably going to be a most common trip up, and that is these mounting screws that come in these kits. They're usually the cheapest of cheap in terms of hardware, and they have a Phillips head and then a flat head. But if you're using a compact nut driver or a drill, easily you can strip these out and kind of make the task a little bit harder. If you're having that issue, they do have a slot for a standard uh, screwdriver, so you can manually tighten those down just to get the job done. It's gonna take longer, it's gonna be tedious, but uh, it'll get the job done. What I do is I have a actually a screw, it's a general multi-purpose construction screw made by SPACs. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested. I use them for a lot of different jobs like this. And although they have a little custom bit that comes usually in a box, they're just a lot better to apply torque to and get them to sink into the stud. And then also I use with my compact nut driver, a little Dewalt bit there that helps to hold that screw in while you're, you have one hand to drive it in and then one hand holding the bracket. So just a few things for you to consider because that's probably the one thing that can really trip you up on these projects is stripping that screw. So don't completely tighten it down yet because what you want to do is use that slot to give you the play to get your bracket at the exact right height. So now we'll sink the second one after positioning it exactly where we want it. So, so if you have an extra set of hands, that is ideal. If not, if you're by yourself, what I do is I mount the rail. I put a small screw in the trim, just lightly secured to hold it. So I can just rest it there. Put a torpedo level on the head rail. So I magnet mount the torpedo level. And then I mount the second bracket, making sure the head rail centered up. I mount the center second bracket onto the head rail. Then I position that second bracket and I'll mark where level is. So I use my bubble level, 
get it right in the center. Perfect. And then I'll go ahead and mark the center point of the slot, and that's where I'm going to drive this bracket in. All right, then we'll go ahead and drive in the first screw. And I do want to stress again, these screws that, I, that are down in the description are just going to be 10 times easier to install. They're expensive, but honestly, the time and headache it saves you, and it just equals a more secure mounting, it's worth every penny. All right, so then we'll take the front edge, put that in, and then clip the back edge. If you have a 72 inch head rail, you're gonna want at least three brackets. Because I have a much wider one at 104 inches, I need four. So what I do is I'm just measuring the distance between the two brackets here and dividing by three. In my case, it's gonna be 32 inches. So I'm just gonna mark from the mounting nut on top, 32 inches over, and then I'm gonna mark where I want the top of the bracket to be installed. Now we know overall our head rail is level, so I'm gonna just install these brackets temporarily. To easily mount both of these screws, I am gonna to need to remove the head rail, and then I'll go ahead and mount those last brackets. All right, with now with all the brackets in place, we'll go ahead and position before you take that off, it might be good to mark exactly where the bracket was at so you don't have to reposition where the head rail should be to make sure it's centered. So now with the head rail fully mounted, we'll want to install the louvers. Now this one has a little bit of a design on the outside, so that's apparent that that's facing out. If not, if it's the same on both sides, it does have a bit of a cup shape or a con convex shape, and that cup shape should be facing out. Now with the louvers fully open, I did loosen up all the top nuts, and that is so I can move this out and make sure that they do not hit the trim when they're fully open. Then once I have it where I'm at, I'll just go ahead and tighten that up. Now, there is a Phillips head on the bottom that you'd usually tighten up. To help you tighten the top nut, you can kind of press down a little bit on the head rail, and that's gonna help you tighten up that top nut. The last step is usually called the valance, and the valance is what's gonna give you kind of that finished trim work at the top. They come with small little brackets, then you'll just space those pretty much at the same spacing as the mounting clips. Then to finish off these corners, they'll also have some corner pieces. So that's it, I have everything installed and it's ready to go. As you saw, there's a few points that you can trip you up. If you're doing a 104 inch long one like this, it is nice to have a second set of hands. Also, you saw the screws that come with it are less than desirable. Uh, they're gonna, they are gonna have a tendency to strip out and it is very common that they'll strip out. So look down in the description, those SPACs, ones that I use, the general multi-purpose construction screw are amazing and they will drive in so much easier than the, the ones that you get in the package. As we talked about at the start, you're gonna wanna have an overhang if you do an outside mount. And actually you have a perfect vantage point of why that is. So the camera right now is off to the side of the vertical blinds. And because I had to go basically in line with the glass, 
if somebody or was off to the side, actually you don't have that privacy, they can see through it. So that's why you want the one inch or two inches outside the opening of an overlap, because then that's gonna give you complete privacy and also block out all that light. Again, in my case, from a cost uh, timing perspective, I need to go with the 104 opposed to a more ideal 110, 108 or 110 uh, inches wide. If your situation was a little different and you don't know how to handle that, again, down in the comments is the best place. Go ahead and put your question in. I'd be happy to jump in and help you out as much as I can. Now, before you take off, subscribe to our channel. We have weekly videos like this coming out to help you with your repairs and improvements around the house, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.